So throughout this uh, course, we're going to be talking about energy, environment, and everyday stuff. When you talk about energy, you need to be quantitative. It doesn't just do, you know, it doesn't do you any good if we only talk about, oh, this is how energy is made, but rather we want to put some numbers with it. We want to be able to compare. To do that, we'll need units. I live in America. I think we're the only country that still uses the British system. Even the British decided to use the metric system. As a scientist, I love the metric system, but I still have to relate to the everyday stuff that's in this country of 320 million people. So, the English unit for energy is the British thermal unit, the BTU. It's the amount of energy it takes to raise one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. A much more uh, usable and even used in the U.S. unit is the calorie. A calorie is the amount of heat it takes to raise one gram of water one degree centigrade. Now, that is a metric unit. When people talk about food and they say, how many calories are in food? They actually are talking about kilocalories, a thousand calories. A McDonald's Big Mac sandwich has 530 calories, food calories. If you actually converted that to, of course, kilocalories, it's the same, 530 kilocalories. If we wanted the small c calorie, the calorie that's actually the one gram of water per degree centigrade, it would be 530,000. There is another energy unit, another metric energy unit, called the joule. And that's the standard energy unit. A joule relates to a calorie by the conversion of one calorie is 4.1868 joules. Many times you will have things related in number of joules, sometimes you'll have calories, sometimes you'll have quads. A quad is a quadrillion British thermal units, BTUs, 10 to the 15th BTUs. Sorry for all this. But when we get to nuclear systems, I've got to tell you even one more energy unit, and that's the electron volt. The electron volt is a very useful unit when you're dealing with single atoms and single electrons. Turns out if you take one charged particle, you put it through the potential difference of one volt, it gains one EV of energy. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules is one EV. Let's calculate how much energy you get from a reaction. When I told you about the definition of energy, my definition of energy, it's putting bonds into a more stable state. Well, how do you know if something's more stable or less stable? Sometimes you just know. Nitroglycerin, not very stable. A seashell, pretty stable but we can put numbers on it. If we look at a chart of the heat of formation, the enthalpy of formation, this tells us how stable something is. If it's below zero, it's stable. And the more negative it is, the deeper it is into a well, the harder it would be to get out of the well. Think about it. You're stuck in a well, and the well is about well, this foot. You just step out, I'm out. You're in a well that goes down for 100 meters. Well, that's pretty tough to get out of. It's the same thing for a stable molecule. So if we want to see how much energy we get out from something, we need to take it into a more stable state. We need to rearrange the atoms. Let's take the example of methanol, burning methyl alcohol. It's the most simple of alcohol. It's a carbon. It's got three hydrogens, and then to make it an alcohol, an O, an oxygen, and another hydrogen, an OH. Methanol burns very completely. It even has an invisible flame. That's because all you're making is carbon dioxide and water vapor. So if we start with 
the methanol molecule itself, you can look up on a chart and see that it has a particular heat of formation. In the units of kilocalories per mole, and a mole is a certain number of atoms, it turns out for methyl alcohol it's about a shot glass full, that number of atoms has a heat of formation of minus 48 kilocalories per mole. So we start with that. Then we're going to burn it. So we're going to mix it with oxygen, we're going to combust it. And it turns out for this type of unit scale, oxygen's up at zero. So we get some oxygens, and we rearrange the bonds. We rearrange these bonds into water and CO2. And when we do that, we can now figure out what are the stability for water and CO2. Well, let's look at the chart. CO2 is at minus 94. It's more stable than methanol. Water is at minus 57. So, if we want to figure out how much energy is released, we can do a simple equation. We take the minus 48, it equals minus 94, minus 57, minus 57, and plus some unknown, the amount of energy released. We usually use the letter Q. And now we just have a very simple algebra equation. Stick it in your calculator, and you get Q being 161 kilocalories per mole. Of course, a shot of alcohol, not this kind of alcohol, this one makes you blind, is something you can drink, right? Take a shot. And you might say, hey, how many calories in that? Well, ethyl alcohol has a few more calories than methyl alcohol. I think its number's around 200. You might say, wait a minute, I looked up vodka in my calorie counter. It says 100 calories. Well, that's because you're not drinking 200 proof, 100% alcohol when you take a shot of vodka, right? Your shot of vodka is 100 proof or 80 proof. It's only 80%, not 80. It's only 80 out of 200, 40% alcohol or 50% alcohol. The rest of it is water, which of course doesn't have any calories. There's an interesting thing about proof. The word sounds like you're trying to prove something, and indeed you are. 100 proof alcohol burns. So if you were selling someone some alcohol and you had diluted it with water, how would they know? Hey, this is 100 proof. Prove it. Set it on fire. Doesn't burn. It's not 100 proof.